What's up, everybody? It's your boy Mars Man here. And today I'm joined with the Mars Man crew to break down the massive Starfield showcase that was shown to us just earlier today. Um, and guys, there's a lot of things to break down. I kind of want to get your overall good, the bad that you thought overall about the entire thing and answer the question of does Starfield match the hype of what they've been bringing to the table this entire process? So let's jump right into the beginning. I mean, Starfield, obviously, this was massive. I mean, I was surprised of how long this took. I mean, my girlfriend was watching it with me and Angela Kill, and, and she was saying, this is this is all the same thing. Like, she has, she's never been used to watching trailers like that, but this was a long showcase overall of all the many different components that Starfield is bringing to the table. And I wouldn't be surprised if they said, hey, we're dropping this in two discs, like they said that they're like, what, like Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is doing because of how massive that this game is. And I can't even imagine the digital memory that you're going to need to use for this game with the amount of things that are included with it. I mean, uh, overall, I'll, let's just go talk about some of the things we liked. I mean, they went, it, they went like able, they went so deep into everything. Um, it feels like a massive amount, but I was really enjoying the gameplay. I thought, I felt like they did a great job. At least I, you know, there's a lot of reports out there that after last year's showcase, they said, Hey, we need to, revamp the gameplay gameplay a little bit more make it feel a little more fluid and that made that, that what they showed today was definitely looks way better than what i saw the last time i feel like last time i'm not gonna i'm not gonna say it looks like redfall because it, it's not it's way better than redfall last time too but it felt slower it felt more like a, a fallout gameplay kind of loop and this one feels more like a cyberpunk a far cry type of gameplay loop where it's like it's a lot more faster a lot more movement and i felt like they they definitely had revamped it and with all the opening skills and character creation that you can do very similar to cyberpunk where you create your own backstory and then based on your backstory it actually opens up a lot of different story elements that you could they basically uh have different cut scenes or, or voice lines that help you out in certain situations like i think they gave the example that like if you were um you can pick a certain religion to be a part of the crimson the crimson tide or, or crimson red whatever you want to call it uh, the Crimson something. Alabama. Yeah, Alabama. Was, uh, <laughs> Crimson Tide. Um, you can say you're part of the same religion as one of these core groups, and all of a sudden, like, you get jumped by a whole, like, brigade of them, and you can actually talk your way out of getting attacked because you're you're part of the same religion as they are. Then they'd be like, oh, yeah, you're all cool, and just let you go. Like, all these little things. Like, Cyberpunk used to do that with, like, if you're a street kid, you can talk yourself out of a bad situation with uh, different gangs, or you can, you know, do whatever. And it's the same type of concept. And I really like that idea where... You really uh add into that you know it's your choice it's your way to play and it actually opens up way more replayability overall because now you can play a second run through completely be a completely different background and it just changes the whole game for you um i think that was a really cool component the weapons they talk about so many different diverse guns you can use uh in this game which i think is great the gameplay just looked fluid and i think that's something that i really enjoyed um and i kind of i want to get you guys opinions first before we jump back into anything else that we'd like but Angelica, was there something that you thought right away that really jumped out to you as something you really enjoyed about the Starfield showing? Yeah, the combat thing was a big one. And, and just some of the news that come up afterwards. I know you guys are watching this now, which we're, we're talking about pretty much right after this thing has happened. 125 gigabytes on PC. It didn't talk about the console part yet, but they talked about a whole new animation system from the last time we saw, which was last year. And that year was definitely needed. They brought in id Software to help with the graphics of the game. Not so much the combat, but the graphics, which look better than it did last year. Um, I also just like the content. They talked about a lot of content in this game, a thousand worlds that apparently you can go to. Um, you have that option to be a first or a third person uh, while you're playing the game. They, they showed some of the city designs, character designs, um, the ship designs I thought was another really important thing, customizing your ship, battling in space, boarding on plane, uh, uh, other aircraft, and the different types of things you can do, including outposts and cities that they showed. So it felt like there is a lot in there, a vast galaxy type of world, and the concept really does look tremendous. And I think it, they really blew us away with what we, the potential of this game. Now the big question is going to be execution. Right. I mean, Cyberpunk had a great concept as well that we all really liked, but they didn't execute. And I think this is going to this is the most hyped up game since Cyberpunk. Um, and, and really, execution is going to be the key um, 
coming when this game releases, but the hype and, and what they showed was definitely very impressive from what we saw last year. Yeah, I mean, like, at the end of the day, I when I saw the kind of the expansion of the space, like what you can do, the the whole thing with the thousand different worlds, like they kind of showed you that like this, there's so much traveling you can do and they limit you. Obviously, the more you play, the more you can travel, the more places you can see. And I think that's like kind of the whole grind of it, all, right? Like you need to level up your spaceship to travel yeah, further cruise. out. Yeah. yeah, you can get crews. Um, the skill trees, which I didn't get to mention, that there's five different types of skill trees with four tiers in them. So a lot of customization. Yeah. Now, uh, Hockey, I want to ask your opinion. What do you think that you like the most from this the the Starfield Showcase? Yeah, so I think this is probably one of the best um, single uh, game showcases that uh, or directs that Microsoft or Xbox has done. I mean, they had a ton of gameplay. Um, it was about 45 minutes to almost an hour long. So, uh, like I said, ton of gameplay, and you guys kind of hit it right on the head. Uh, the exploration and the custom uh, customization were just uh, unbelievable. So exploring, like you guys said, over a thousand worlds, and they kind of explain that some of these worlds will, um, you know, have more minerals than actual, you know, animals and, and things to do, but most of the worlds are, or, or a lot of the worlds are going to have different species and, and a lot of bases that you can explore and stuff like that. So I thought that was real amazing. And to the customization, like you had said, Mars, uh, you know, the creation of your character, the background, the traits that your character uh, can use, and, and you can kind of uh, customize that as well. And then, uh, you know, everything that you can do in the world from, um, you know, like I said, exploring and just building a ship. There's so many things that you can do, and I just think that was probably one of the best parts. Yeah, you see, like, the biggest thing I felt overall was that the the fact that you are, when you make a comparison to this game, I mean, I feel like this is just Fallout in space. Like, you you can go make your own bases out, whatever these planets you want to go to. And, um, you know, a lot of people are going to say, well, you know, the art style, the faces of the people, they're not, like, photo jet. I mean, Fallout, uh, Fallout was never yeah, that. Yeah, they, they've always struggled with they've, NPC designs. They've never, I mean, like they've never been that type of developer. They never, you know, you you think about the I don't old, know what it is. That's the one thing they just, just don't do. It's just, they, it's just they don't make really it. Yeah, they really don't care. It's like think about Skyrim. Like it's the same type of thing. Like they they never really made people look super like like great when it comes to the talking to them and. I'm not sitting here like, oh, I need the lady to have like, you know, peach fuzz like on her face or else I can't talk to her. Like, I really don't care necessarily about that in order for a game to be enjoyable. Like, obviously, the, I think the biggest thing that I'm wondering about this game is how efficient are these like planets at being rendered? How efficient are the people? Like, I mean, I've heard the whole like, hey, this is like a city. People's got lives and talk. I heard that with Cyberpunk, right? They, they made that same claim is that every person has a different interaction and movement right and then all of a sudden you you're sitting in a cutscene in cyberpunk and it's the same dude five times in a row gets spawned <laughs> right next to you so like i i've seen that happen so yeah. how yeah. if you're going to be efficient with your claims yeah. then i think that this game will be a contender for game of the year i mean i uh, based on what they showed you and th this is listen i think this is the aftermath of the Redfall. like they said hey hey right in the beginning like, like this is there are some parts here shown in pc but these are all all the settings are dialed back so you can see what it looks like on the Xbox Series X. Like they said, because they, that was a lot of the criticisms that they had from Redfall was that they didn't show you everything about how the consoles look, right? They just said, this is what PCs always look like, but not the consoles, right? So they said they dialed it back for the Xbox. So you can see exactly what it looks like. And, and even then, the look of the game, the atmospheres, the animations looked fantastic. It looks like a, a massive game. Even my girlfriend, who's not as big of a gamer as me, was like, hey, I'd play it. Like, she's like, I would play around with this game because it looks massive. It looks like you could do so much with it. And and they definitely, and they didn't really necessarily show as much of a story. I mean, the story kind of, this the gift showcase was more about like the, what you can do in the game and the aspects of what is there. And I can imagine like if the story is anything coherent and good, then this game is is like a shoe in for a game of your contender. Like, I mean, like the, what you can do by alone gives you a lot of great things if it lands right that's the other if it lands this game is set up to be a really good game but if it has any story that is like good along with it then like we're now we're talking now we're now you're cooking something right and i think that's the big thing that we have to see with starfield but with with the good we do need to talk about the bad and and honestly when i think about the bad for this the fact that it's still like the 30 fps thing is obviously what a lot of people are gonna rag on starfield for um, I think I am more accepting of 30 FPS on Starfield 
than I am for Redfall. Like, I mean, when you think about 30 FPS, the the re main reasonings for this is because of the fact that like you're, you're trying to get the frame rate to you know if you're you know, let's just say like for example um tom howard had an interview with ign afterward he says you know we are uh uh we you know tim howard it had an interview Sorry, and said todd yeah, howard. Todd howard? i can't say it. I thought, <laughs> jesus christ tim todd howard, todd. Tim todd tim, whatever todd well, howard had an interview anything. with ign and said hey you know we're we're clocking the series x at 30 because we don't want any sort of stuttering to occur when you're seeing these landscapes and you know I, and i'll say like yeah i can understand that in massive games like starfield like breath like, like like tears of the kingdom where it's a it's a massive open world game and sometimes you want to make sure that things run smoothly especially when every little thing counts for like the you know rendering of these planets like you know you don't want anything crappy to happen and all of a sudden like the whole planet is just broken and that could be a problem now pc is hitting 60 they said that it's hitting like close to 60 in a lot of cases but they're worried they don't want it to like stutter right so they're like we're gonna clock it at 30 um i think that's gonna be the one of the biggest things that i think that this game is gonna have an issue with is they he said that it hits 4k on series x like when it comes to the, like the pixels um in 1440 on the series x uh series s and it looks vibrant it looks good he just says that the frame rate they just they just want to clock it at 30 so that it doesn't have those render the, that like frame rate drop in the middle of a cutscene or something so i'll rag on them the, um, for that um but i can also say like i understand for open world games why you can limit it but when <laughs> it just means that everything else of the game needs to be good like I, i'll use the same thing for tears of the kingdom if tears of the kingdom sucked ass like i don't think i'd be like well this is a 30 fp this is a 30 fps game like i this is the reason why it's not good if, if the game sucked ass then that's the reason why you don't like the game not the frame rate drops like it's i could deal with that because tears of the kingdom is a great game so uh i kind of want to get, get your guys opinion here hockey what was something you didn't really like from this starfield showcase yeah so <clears throat> there wasn't a lot of bad from the actual showcase but i think the bad is um possibly on the horizon with the execution and langelic hill had mentioned that um it's hard to trust microsoft right now with infinite 343 the core of the game is great but didn't have a lot of content and then they hyped up redfall to you know the heights of, of a mountain and it just came out and it was completely broken so i think the execution of this game is the most important part of the game Everything that they promised us um, has been above and beyond any game as of right now. And it seems like they're making this almost their new child, uh, so to speak. So um, they're hyping this up. If it lands, you know, we're good to go. But it's, uh, it's a little nerve wracking. Uh, so I'm just hyped to see the game come out and play it. And I'm hoping to God it uh, isn't a mess. Yeah, uh, Angelica, what did you feel like was kind of like a negative or a thing you didn't really like from the showcase? Yeah, I thought everything was smooth until the after show interview. And then that's when they had to drop the 30 uh, frame threshold on console. And I'm going to give the same criticism or the same standard that I did on the Redfall. When you hear about 30 frames per second, it does not automatically mean a flop. And I know some people are going to uh, say that it is to them, which they can have their own opinion. But the general audience, the majority of people playing video games will not know exactly what a drop below 30 frames per second is uh if unless you tell them right so they could you know th th you can say all you want about 60 versus 30 but the big thing is can this game land and do they do other things to make up for the 30 which can and i that's why i am a little more lenient on the 30 for starfield than i did for redfall because you could see higher potential for starfield with the vast universe and content that's in it now if the game is laggy or the game has the similar issues that redfall have then there really isn't an excuse now 30 will be you know compounded with that issue but i do not like hearing the comparisons to tears of the kingdom my only frustration with this 30 fps is because tears of the kingdom is on a six-year-old console at the end of its life cycle and it's a mobile console and it's so it's just a little weird how xbox series x i'm not talking about s xbox series x is a very powerful console and this is now two first party titles from Bethesda that for some reason can't get to 60 when the PC can get unlocked at the 60 frames. So that's my only issue that I have. And it's not to say I'm not playing Starfield because of the 60, like the 60 frame, uh, frames per second brigade. But that's the only thing that's weird is why is the X 
not running similar to the PC. That's the only part that is annoying. And yeah, we hear all the talk about the fidelity and stuff like that. But why is the X? Like, that's the part I don't fully grasp. And that's the only frustrating part from all this. But I still have hope for this game. I still think it could be pretty good. Now, with the kind of this talk of the good and bad, we have to talk about the hype. And I think that Starfield obviously is getting that hype that a lot of people are looking at this game as being the next one that will either, you know, push this generation in the direction of at least salvaging uh, the Xbox console sales to to go back up again. Um, and for people to say, hey, you want to jump, you don't want to give up on Xbox because they do have games in the future. And, and Starfield's kind of like that centerpiece that a lot of people are looking forward to and seeing whether or not it will meet the hype. And I mean, if I'm looking at this, this showcase, it did one thing. It definitely gave a lot more insight on the wide array of things that are available for Starfield for you to do. Like whether it you, they straight up said you can create your own path. Like I think that was the main theme of that entire thing and saying, hey, you know what? You want to go be a, a space pirate and just go take everything for everybody and go be you know, a smuggler? You literally can. Right? If you want to be a space cowboy and hunt down, be a bounty hunter, go hunt down all these people, you literally can if you want to. Like you can do whatever you want, be a, a base creator, follow the main store, whatever you want to do, you can. And I think that is something that a lot of people are definitely interested in. I mean, Fallout was always that kind of follow your own way. The story missions are here, but like, go, there's a bunch of side stuff for you to do if you want. And I think that that's what Starfield was trying to find the vibe of. They're trying to be that, do whatever you want. This game is massive, have fun with it. And as long as they can land on that, then the they will meet that hype. I think they definitely create a lot more excitement about Starfield now than I've ever seen before from this game. I mean, there's a lot of excitement already. A lot of Xbox fanboys, a lot of people have said, oh, this game is going to be massive. A lot of people have said, oh, it's going to flop. Like, But I'll tell you what, though, this, this showcase definitely showed me, like, there's a lot of things here to do, and there's a lot of components that they've been working on, and it definitely looks a lot better than last year. So I think... Does it meet the hype for me? I think right now it's writing that coach. It's writing that 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 drive that they set themselves up for. I think they're they're writing in the right direction. It the, now just depends on whether they actually land on it or not. Um, but I want to get your guys' opinion before we close this out. Uh, Langelico, do you feel like they are kind of keeping with the hype? Yeah, hopes hopes were high. I think the year delay definitely helped them on at least the graphical and gameplay side. Um, and like you just said, it, it's about execution at this point. This showcase did not damage the hype at all. Um, it actually, to me, maybe increased it even a little bit more um, based on the improvement of gameplay and graphics. Yeah, Hockey, anything about, do you think they are matching the hype here? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think the showcase really, um, you know, uh, put light to a game that could be really amazing. Uh, the only thing is that I've been let down by so many games, Battlefield, Cyberpunk, Overwatch, some of my favorite games. So um, I will be hyped and I'm gonna keep the hype, but I'm not gonna get overly hyped. I'm not gonna spend a hundred dollars on- You the, ain't getting the watch and briefcase, bro. <laughs> I'm, not the watch, I'm not getting the briefcase. I'm not spending any extra money. I'm just gonna get it on Game Pass. I'm gonna play it day one. And I just hope to God that it comes out in a good state. Yeah, with that being said, though, I kind of want to see what do you guys think about the Starfield Showcase? Did it impress you? Does it match the hype? Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Mars Man signing off. Peace out, guys.